Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Eyes 8.6. Okay, well, let's continue this. We're getting ready. We're still invading Africa here. Give these guys a bit of a rest. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Finally, 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 finally. Okay. Production. Don't know when. Don't know where. Okay, 51 days. Let's get the first four in production. Now. Yeah, we can do that. I'm going to move all these up to the top. Get them done as fast as possible. This does change things a bit, I think. And they'll be in the Mediterranean too. I think they'll have greater range. And obviously, you see the, you know, um, LC and the sort of Higgins boat um, type design. At least that's what I, I sort of see that. Because um, I don't think those are really like landing ship tanks, the big things. So these are really, and the reason I think they'll have... Um, think they'll have greater range is because they're in effect ships along with the landing boats. But uh, we will see about that. I think that was that a one and done or no we want to stop that. Well, not that that isn't going to add range to something. Okay, we'll continue. Um, we need to add range for bombardment a little bit more. No. no. Okay, we'll continue that then. We'll also checked here, and we've got um, not double by any means, but a lot, a lot of extra officers, a lot more than just the ten percent. So, and not that we're not going to burn through them all fast through the um, oh, amphibious evasion focus. Oh, that was up here. Was it? Yes. Okay, so that helps various um, units invade better via the sea. Now, bow ramps, true Higgins boats, type things, short bombardment with some machine gun down there. Well, let's do elastic defense. I'm not sure why we're not getting better supplies through here. Now we actually have two supply ports. And 
42 and 103. So yeah, this is a bit bigger. Oh, Croatia wants to... More on those. Okay. Oh, shoot. Damn, 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 damn. Go to. Guess we made it into port. Wow, we're beat up. Wonder what it is that we fought. This has been a um a very costly venture. We've lost the Prince Eugen and the Blucher. The Konigsberg, the Kong, and two destroyer flotillas. That was not a good choice. Oh well. Not a good choice to come here. We're going to keep in port for a while. We're not going to move until we get these things massively repaired. And we get the fighters on board. That probably would have helped. Just make sure we had more naval bombers and bombers and everything out there. Okay, this is interesting. I still don't understand exact, I mean, heart attack plus minus, now it's where minus, so it was heart attack and soft attack less effective for everybody. Global gain balance. Why? Maybe that has something to do with things I've complained about in the past. Not just they're doing it because of me, because obviously if I'm playing it about somebody else's too. Um, his late game, units being too powerful, and shattering all the time. Attack the enemy, the enemy's there, and you're um, attacking it. And, you just shatter. Oh, let's see what. Um, oh no, it's okay. Let's do it. Just think. Yeah, this. Okay, so oh, this is a good, good division. And mm, okay, well, first before we drop that, let's. Let's pick a, um, that game 50 manpower. Yep, we're going to do that one. I'm going pretty low. Internationalist, Spionage, Focus. Yes, just the extra spies. International Focus. Okay, well, because our manpower is so low, and part of that reason, I think, is because, if I remember correctly, we did Luftwaffe last time. Um, I know we didn't do the Navy, because that just... What did we do? I don't know if we did Optimum Panzer. Sorry, I don't remember. If you want, you can go back and look. But I think we did Luftwaffe, just to sort of um, get the... Um, Bunch of air factories. 10% or 20% manpower bonus. I really do often pronounce it. I don't know, but because we're so low and we're getting ready for our Soviet invasion, which will probably chew up lots of manpower, I'm going to go with Das Hair. And, yeah, armaments factories, which will help us build all of the other elements. Economic boost, short term. 
And be careful to do that. We want to upgrade to SS Panzer Grenadier Division Das Reich. Okay. Now did Das Reich, Das Reich, and I'm gonna keep saying it both ways. Oh no, it's on the field probably. Kepler. Okay. Ooh, we did have you down here before, so let's get you back there. A little better unit. Bulgaria, yes, we have energy. Come on, the second. Okay, I'm paused. This is where the Japanese invade the Philippine Islands. Just invade through, okay. Okay, that's uh, we'll go take a look at that shortly. No, still nothing else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're invading through here. It's a scripted invasion. I think this is where they invaded historically. I think. But okay. Uh, okay, Mein Fuhrer at one of our supply depots have just been attacked by enemy commando forces belonging to the USA. We are still assessing the damage at this time, hopefully. Okay, so we're going to lose a quantity of supplies. Most likely, well, oh, no, oh, we'll lose two sets. Okay, so that's why the number one of four and one of four. So, okay, well, um, supplies for Athens, 5,000, yeah, go ahead, they'll trickle back if they need me. Okay, General, Gr um, General Field Marshal Vaughn. Blown, Bloom, or Molly dies? Okay. Um, he was a very well respected uh, Austrian um, general, field marshal, officer, whatever you want to say. Um, the leader will die here. I think we may be using him. Um, there is him as a young man in Austria. Uh, Died of old age, um, at the start of World War One. Blah blah blah. blah. He, kind of, he became German subject and received an honorary promotion to General Field Marshal, the German Army. In addition, he was appointed honorary Colonel in Chief of the Infantry Regiment, 28 of it, in his hometown of Torpau. When he died in December 41, he was accorded a state funeral with full military honors in Vienna. So this is pictures of his funeral. Um, like I've said before, I don't include in my mods, this is Third Reich event, um, event, um, combat deaths, most, er, er, generally speaking. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't think I include any, because we don't know that Rommel is going to be riding in his car in Normandy in 43, to get shot from the air that did obviously he was um forced to die by hitler but he was wounded here i wonder what would have happened had he not been um wounded because they played it up after he died um he took poison or whatever to keep his family safe because that basically he was informed that his family would suffer a great I um, don't know what explicitly they said to him if he didn't go with them and basically commit suicide so that they could play it up as dying of his wounds. Um, so that's what they played it up as. But had he not been wounded, had he been at the front with his command staff, I wonder if they would have tried to arrest him after the attempt to kill Hitler. That would have been a different thing because he wouldn't have been alone. So just would have been a bit different. Um, 
because yes they might have played the same old oh well your family will suffer kind of thing that um, they did play but mm, being at in a German command post away because he was sort of isolated at home to some degree uh, playing being at a German command post he probably could have radioed a message out secured somewhere that um, my family is in danger please German forces locally to but secure my family because um, he was such a popular commander that threats to his family if he could get it out there I that would have been different and I don't know if he would have chosen to die at that point um, you know when you're most popular and so if he hadn't been wounded nicely okay Okay, let's see here. Reorganize the war ministry until August 42. Recruitment time down. That's nice. Um, territory fried up. Money. National parliamentary risk. I think we're going to go with recruitment time. This time I know we've normally been doing the reducing revolt risk but we may change that okay um the second flieger corps was formed in october 1939 in frankfurt man from the second flieger division the corps was relocated to the mediterranean theater of operations in 1941 okay well that should get us a well we haven't gotten over here to get this unit I'm just going to send them down. But, yeah, that needs to be on the map of the future. You can't build those. Where is it? Oh, it's here. Well, we have to get a proper, um, oh, we need to build. I was going to send you North Africa. Where is my... These guys, where are they? Oh, they were going to pick up the set, which they will eventually. But you can set to here and make sure you get there before they get there. So we will strategically redeploy you. Um, we're going to send you out just in case you're needed. Sort of hoping we'll get an event that triggers some other veteran HQs. Yeah, I think we get a whole new flock of. Officer types. Yeah, he looks good. I'm mentioning that is why I was sort of waiting for the first of the year down here. For so these to get I can say a bunch of new officer types, but I'm hoping some level one guys can I quite honestly oh yeah, a bunch of well, yeah. Including a bunch of specialty ones. But I've added, but I just want a real guy, not a fake guy. Keep threatening to remove all of these before the game, before I start a series. I really wish I had again. This is, he's a Luftwaffe officer, at least by his uniform. Um, he's too good to get okay to, um,
Can we just have some... Yeah, like this guy here. He has another job, but he's bad enough. Oh, come on, not somebody who's a panzer guy or something. Not an SS guy, he wouldn't want to command. Troops. Oh, yeah, that's my prejudice about. Now, just I don't know who von Blutcher is here in level one, and okay, I'm totally get with whoever decided to give him a level one. But what I do, and again, I don't know about von Blutcher and um, who he was. But when I see him in his fur cap and heavy coat in the photo, I normally like, oh, okay, because I'm just trying to absorb information. And, oh, okay, I'll give you um, cold weather. Whether he should have a defensive doctrine as well as cold weather or instead or something like that. Just the way I think. Just, you know, go with it. Go with the, the, the photo. Not too many pretty cool ones we'll give this guy. So now we've got two African colonial units here. He's going there, he's going up there to help them. Oh, I think they're going to be okay, so we're going to start hitting you back to the coat stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I think we want to do that. You're going to take that and then head to the port. Back, just in case you noticed a bit of a jump. Had to deal with a couple little things around here. Waiting for okay, we've got that. So um, you stop. You stop it. Okay. Spain, yes, you may have energy. Okay, you're here. taking forever to get anywhere, but okay, well, I'm thinking I might send you down this way, you need to do better, I don't know, heading into that jungle up that way. Twin engine transport plane prototype has advanced. Very good. Increased range, which is very nice. We'll take that. 20th Gerbs Army Commando up in Lapland. Okay, cool. We already sort of kind of... We can transfer some of the connections. Okay, transport crisis in the east. Oh, I still need to finish watching that railroad documentary. Look. Hitler's Railroads, or whatever it's called. Watched all but the last half hour, I think. Um, after the goals for Operation Barbarossa would not be reached, the goals of Operation would not be reached in late 41, <coughs> the logistical shortcomings of the German planning for the campaign were dramatically revealed as being, at best, unrealistic. going on. 
if not blunt negligence. While German Supreme Command still assumed that winter, that in winter the transportation crisis would not deteriorate further, that supply operations would be possible on a satisfactory scale, the transportation capacity fell to an all-time low. Hitler's stand and hold strategy, however, was um, depending on the steady influx of supplies through the railways transport. Yes, if I mean, I'm not saying absolutely, but generally speaking, if that stand and hold order, if the vehicles would function, meaning if they had had uh, antifreeze in the system, which generally speaking, I don't think they did. Um, they just had coolant, meaning just water. Um, if they were, you know, able to maintain a level of um, ammunition, food, and even also um, as important as it is cold weather clothing, you know, had they had all that stuff, the, the Soviet counterattack, uh, I'm not sure it would have been, um, wouldn't have been effective in the sense of doing significant damage, but um, it wouldn't have been anything like it was. At least that's my understanding of it. Okay. Okay. Hitler felt betrayed by the Reichsbahn, which had been unable to solve the permanent transportation crisis. Military commanders at the front and the general staff in Berlin seized this opportunity to shift the blame for the dangerous military development and confirm Hitler's view. German railway organization, Reichsbahn, was eventually so overstrained that in spring 42, it declared itself unable to perform its task any longer. Hitler felt compelled to tackle the issue more seriously and empowered Albert Speer to take vigorous and drastic measures to improve the transportation system by mastering this crisis efficiently. Albert Speer's myth as a fabulous manager began to grow rapidly. Part of it um, is, you know, a myth, part of, you know, Speer. Part of it is, um, well, how shall we say, you know, myth or overstatement but also he was part of it he was a good manager you can see that when he was managing early on some of Hitler's building projects around the right chancery and such even back in those days of the brown house that he organized up um in or did the architectural drawings for and then um did work the management shift he, he had a talent for that that's definitely true but part of it a major part of it is and i've talked about this before is the complete inefficiency in the um german governmental fish system it was just extremely inefficient you didn't have the um the capitalistic element of um things worked well you made lots of money things worked badly you went out of business and just you know no government you know because before before fdr yeah i could think of the rails or something that may have had a little government help but most of the stuff was you know pure capitalism if it worked it worked if it didn't it just all fell apart and quickly got replaced by something else that worked now um hitler sort of had that oh um you know uh divide and rule or um, survival of the fittest kind of elements within his political uh, mindset for the different um, departments and things. And I've talked about that before. And that you could sort of say is what I'm talking about there. But it also had an element of um, political reliability. Meaning if you were sort of one of Hitler's favorites, you got protected. You know, um, like talked earlier about and is coming to mind um christian weber the sort of ss i don't know somewhat leader down in um munich he's an you know alt comrade an old comrade of hitler so he knows hitler from the early early days and so that's why when they were going to shut down all the horse racing because they needed the horses for the war effort this is like in 43 or something you know when things are really going badly he complained and they kept the munich horse races open um, and the stables and the horses and all going, even though Germany's collapsed, because he had enough power to do it, even though made, you know, whether you want to destroy, you know, send the horses to war to get killed, you know, the good high quality horse breeding material, or simply just shut down the whole race thing, keep a few of the, you know, breeding stock around because you, 
if you're looking even sort of longish term, you need breeding stock for horses. So, but you know, do that in a sensible, cost-effective way. No, he got protected because he had political power, um, whether he was being ef efficient or effective or not. And this sort of this competition, this overlap, this this wastefulness of resources um, is all going on. So part of what happens with Speer is, and we talked about certain areas he doesn't have, absolutely doesn't have any control over really, is like the, the SS building um, uh, elements, um, the SS economic empire that's going on. Um, doesn't have any control over those. Others he has limited control, limited influence. They're sort of protected. Um, it's a lot of the, the gallleiters are protecting local businesses. So, you know, that's all going on. But he does have, what he does also still have is, um, and this is why I rate him so high in the game, because it's not just him. It's, he has, he's one of these guys, even more, much more so than Tote. I mean, Tote knew Hitler. Um, Tote was thought as a, as a, um, uh, uh, a Hitler loyalist. But Speer was a Hitler friend. I mean, a good friend of Hitler, the person. Um, you know, uh, by the end, Hitler, I mean, Speer knew that Hitler was a monster. Speer, I think it comes down to, at least this is how I, you know, this is after reading his book. So obviously you're getting his side of the story and what he wants to do it. So that can be influencing me. But I look at Speer as just a large number of people that just slowly gave away their moral principles over time for expediency and that kind of thing. Not So, so I don't see Speer as an evil man. Now that doesn't mean he didn't do evil. So don't come on and you, you can come on and talk about his war crime, but don't say I'm excusing him. I'm not excusing it. He or saying he didn't participate in it. He definitely participated in factories that were slave production, and he knew about them, period. And doing that is a bad thing. But he is, unlike somebody like, um, you know, that um, is like Himmler who wants to kill off millions of people, Speer just never has that. He just sort of goes along with the system, and the system is an evil system, is how I would do it and it happens in stages it doesn't happen overnight and so it all goes through this so um but but you know and but even when you're running slave factories those slave factories within the nazi system were not the german people you know like i've talked about if you're the right group of people and which i'm not just talking the the, the leadership clique i'm talking about the great vast majority of the german people if you're that right group of people Generally speaking, things until the war is collapsing, things are going well for you and you're protected. And this is what is trying to be benefited. So Speer can look at that and say, I was working for the German people. But once the Hitler wants to do at the end and he finally really comes to realize it and he goes against Hitler, um, you know, Hitler wants to destroy the cities and the towns and, and leave. Um, Germany in such a ruin as, as it's going to be unable to support life, which is obviously going to be terrible and kill millions of, um, not that he's going to go out and kill millions, but by destroying power plants and um, uh, water systems for, for cities, millions of people are going to die because of lack of sanitation, lack because you know, cholera will break out. And without food and, you know, if you blow up all the bridges and all the railway systems, you know, internally, you know, internally in, in Germany, not just out in the fighting areas, um, so so that nothing's left for once the Allies come in and occupy, that's going to mean the German people are going to starve, or enough of them are going to starve. Not that everyone's going to die, but if you can't get food to the cities, people are going to starve if you blow up all the railways. So Speer sees this, and at that point starts, you know, working against Hitler, in, in stopping this order because he realizes that the war is coming to the end. And, you know, and Speer is very sad when Hitler dies because he likes Hitler the man but realizes that he's an evil person. And finally, he realizes that, I believe, at the end. But only at the end. So, let's see. So, we can reorganize this structure. Transportation crisis. Metal, supplies, manpower, money. We can afford all of that. Um, transportation crisis until March 42. Well, that's not that far away. 
supply throughput down. All is well, trans no no reaction. Supplies down, which now of course this sh the problem with this coding of this event is it should have a check. Is at war with Soviet Union? So I don't know if this is a black ice event or a um, one of the other sub mods. Just don't know right offhand. Um, it should have a check for is at war with Soviet Union. So we could go with this and have no problem and um, get the reduction in supplies. Supply throughput. Supply throughput down in each. Supplies down by... I'm guessing here. And I'm going to I'm going to gamble on this because they both have equal supply defend reinforce chance down and supplies down by 5%. That isn't so big since they both have the same supply throughput crisis here. So supply throughput more or less is going to happen. What's going to I'm going to guess is sometime after March 42 we're going to get a railway bonus. The supply throughput bonus that will hang around. So I'm guessing on that, or I should have taken the other one. Because since I'm not at a major war footing, obviously it would hurt down here, but this isn't really anything of a thing. Waiting for what is it? Four days? I thought it was the next day. For recruiting policy. Maybe it's nope. Now we don't need supplies for Crete. Okay, Hitler requests Axis commitment for 1942. Losses of the Wehrmacht in men and material during the winter crisis in 41 42 highlighted the necessity of drawing a larger extent on the resources of the Axis partners for the extended second campaign against the Soviet Union. 42 Hitler addressed personnel or personal letters to the leaders of Italy, Romania, Hungary, inviting them to continue their participation in the military efforts in 42. However, there was no interest. There was no interest of Hitler to involve the tripartite states in a political or strategic plan of war in the East, but solely uh, to cream to cream off. Whatever reserves and manpower and resources were left in the Reich partners. Okay, so yes. Okay, um, again, um, this needs a coding thing for the um, because I don't need these guys to have dissent. Um, not that that's a real biggie. Then I'm presuming we're going to get some bonus from that but we're not at war with the Soviet Union and also I'm hoping this series highlights a little bit for you what some of the problems are with black ice. Might as well support one. Defensive keep these guys from getting too bashed up. Okay. No, it's coming. Okay, the Queen Nacht. Queen Nacht. Wish Germans would separate their goddamn compound words, because I just, um, Nacht Ring Spenderung. Okay, Christmas broadcast was a wartime propaganda broadcast to promote um, coherence between 
the home and front during the 42 and special broadcast on the eve of December. Exchange a greeting regarding the Wehrmacht soldiers and their family in the home front. Reports from occupied countries which soldiers were stationed in. Okay, so we're going to gain... Oh, good. So we get a bunch of bonuses on one of those things. Okay, Fuhrer Directive 40, Atlantic Wall. I remember that picture from when I was a kid. That was impressive. And that was back in the days when I'd seen the, the, the movie The Guns of Navarone. And whatnot. Of course, fictitious novel that was turned into a um, yeah, cool movie. But Coastline Europe will, will, in coming months, be exposed to a dangerous... Okay, um... I think this is somewhat changed from before, but maybe not as much as it should. There is a problem with the um, the defense system, is that when it I'm hoping it's changed. I don't know. Where before, what they do is, um, and I've noticed some major changes from the earlier version of different things, um, and I didn't see how this happened here. Did they give the province to, um, and it looks like they may have done because there's a port there. Did they give the province to the Japanese or, um, did they just put the troops there? See, if they just put the troops there, I think, I don't know, but I think the troops, my troops already there will, will be the defenders and the others attackers. But I'm not absolutely sure. Where before, I'm pretty sure they gave the province. So you fortifying the Atlantic Wall actually sort of helps the attackers, I think. Or it did before, and I hope they've improved it. I hope they've improved it. So I'm planning on building the Atlantic Wall. But, you know, I can always take the, the lowest level one. Okay. There we go. Oh, we are. Been waiting for this. Okay. What we want to do is national recruiting policy, so we don't get that even that nasty one for a little bit. Um, I know it's been a while, but gotta um question or they were having manpower problems we can do open the ranks to everyone who can um, help um, this will set up a lot um, well don't know how much because I can't see the whole thing up there the modifiers you can sort of see a little bit of red which is below the 5% efficient it looks like maybe there's 10% um, I see efficiency production reduce and probably a bit much like a 50% or whatever manpower um, thing and maybe I should have saved it so I could check that out but you can do that plus you get all these militia units which are just junk um, you know so if you're if you're starting January 1945, say, and it's the historical situation, you probably want to do this. Just if you've exhausted all your manpower and you want just militia around to um, help hold things together, basically you're calling out the Volks or the Volkstrom. Yes, you want to do that, but that I don't think is good for me. And oh, and, th and this because this is obviously sort of a uh, at least the majors. I don't know if all the miners get this or whatever. Um, For something like China, that'd be a good idea, you know. But now, only the the best. So you get really good starting experience. You get increase a bunch of increased um, stuff here, but you don't get any manpower bonus. I just keep going for this because you get good starting experience bonus. A little bit of reduction, not as big as that, um, in efficiency, and you get twenty five percent. And power bonus over it, so we're going to do that. 
And since the Serbs are doing their thingy again. Maybe you should come down. Here in the future to be ready to... And I should probably... Well, I'll hold it just a second. Before I start doing that. We don't need quite as big a force. At least they got the Waffen SS part. Yeah, right there. So you go up there. You'll be strong enough to do this. Okay, Operation Bahadere. Operation Bahadere was a special force operation launched in January 1942 by the Nazi infiltration force. In, oh, this is the Afghanistan. will engage in sabotage action and create a revolt in British India. Okay. So this may be Bajadere instead of necessarily Spanish. So, yeah, might as well. We're not, I'm used to this happening, but we're not even in the theater to help it out. Mm. Yeah, at least that'll mess with India a bit. Okay, let's go to, yeah. Now, I want to check out what's going on here. Okay, well, British have taken a little bit of territory, but the Japanese haven't collapsed yet, at least. There, it looks like they're getting on the offensive. And they're getting on the, oh wow, that's a nice offensive there. That that looks like it's going to take um, the, um, oh boy, um, Malaya. See, I know these things, people. Oh, and they've Oh, this has got to be a scripted invasion. Well, maybe not. Probably. So, they can presumably take that. They work at it. And this, they're not working at it hard enough. Um, but at least they are working at it. Oh, the British. See here now. Look at the British have burst out. Wow. Wow, the British burst out of Hong Kong. Don't know if that's scripted or getting all these extra units or that somehow they had forces there for some reason. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Now with this going on up here, this is going to mess with the Indian Army, which probably is not what... It's too heavy. Well, that's maybe the Indian Army or something. I don't know. I don't know what flag they're using. Well, let's see what... No, there. that's... Yeah, the Army in India, so instead of the British or Burma. So they may be marching or counter-marching. Okay. this comet or whatever. Okay, well, let's send the cormoran into the base here. Rebase to there. Hide out for a while from the increasing American presence. Maybe we should send you um, over into the Pacific or something. Okay, bunch of units there that need to come out. Keep that in balance. Okay, so when is this? May. Yeah. I'm hoping to start by May 1, but we'll see what the weather is like with the effects. Definitely by June I want to start the invasion, but unfortunately just the Aprils, those are good. They're just too far behind for that division. 
know how long. Um, you know, I sent one out, but how long to build this? 22 days. Okay, so we'll close. We'll, we'll wait for that if we need to. Now, come over here. Okay, that needs an, an HQ. Um. Sort of checking to see how many armored units are here. Just one there, looks like. Yeah, not enough there. Okay, so we're gonna stick you here. Yeah, let's give it to him. That's yeah, pretty good. Has a mechanized battalion. That's probably about right for things. Let's drop these guys. We're going to see about replacing the. Oh, let me keep clicking here. Let's go over here. Drop or uh, replacing the, um, the island garrisons with these guys. Okay, let's go with just level two. Nobody like him. See, Ditmar. Ditmar has river crossing abilities. And if you're just going to be stuck in a. So do you. Um, just stuck on an island somewhere, enjoying the sun, you don't need to cross any rivers. Okay, so three more divi infantry divisions there. That is useful. And let's see. There we go. Get some HQs for them. And they're going to stay infantry divisions. Okay. SSHQs have advanced. That is good news. And we don't need to push ahead too far. Marine HQs. Special Forces attack bonus. Hmm. Now what we want to do is here, even though it's it's a year ahead. That will really help time between attacks and CAG fighter focus. Carrier air group. Okay, uh, so here just bring it which. Yeah, that will upgrade our one that we're building. How, how long until we got until we get that unit? Because we're going to send that one down not until April to our carrier. Okay, Hungary allows recruitment of ethnic Germans. The German effort to exploit all manpower reserves, even outside the Reich territory, for the struggle in the East, were not confined to the armies of its allies, but also extended to foreign or so called ethnic Germans for the German army, in particular the Waffen SS, had successfully ran an unofficial campaign to gain volunteers in Hungary. Like I told you, some of that was just literally as the. Um, uh, units were moving through Hungarian territory to go after Yugoslavia or heading down to Greece or whatever that they just did it almost literally on the spot and gave them uniforms and took them down there. Uh, okay, where were we? Um, on occasion, on occasion, the visit of the Reich Foreign Minister um, Ribbentrop Hungary legalized the activities and gave its permission to enlist 20,000 ethnic Germans. As we've seen before, there was an ethnic German community um, with one of the events um, that 
had a very pro-Nazi, and basically, to the best of my understanding, and I, I say that because I'm not an expert on German political thought in Hungary during the period, and so very little has been written on it, meaning was there a, and I'm not talking, I'm sure there were some communists, I'm sure there were some socialists, I'm sure there was some sort of free market capitalists, I'm sure there were some um, anti-Nazi monarchists, you know, I'm sure that, but as a, an organizational group of people is what I'm talking about, you know, um, and I look for these things, but I don't always even know the names to, uh, to search for, at least with Hungary, I'm dealing more or less with the same letters and keys that I'm used to, so that I can when I do find it. So I find stuff about the, um, the Ergen Volksdeutsch, or whatever the party is there, um, bits and pieces about it. So, And then, of course, you know, Germany wanted its propaganda out, so it didn't want to have... Too much people know if it, you know, outside of whatever communities, if there was dissent from this organization. So before and during the war, they were sort of projecting their vision on things. Once the communists got in power, things, you know, were hidden and changed as well. So, you know, I just don't know how good some of my information is. But my information and my understanding is, is that the great majority of the people, the Germans, living in here and realize that's 20,000 ethnic Germans that are of military recruitable age so that's hmm what four or five hundred thousand at least other Germans and they're, they're either too young too old women what not um, oh also I'm sure um, Germans already called up for service in the Hungarian army so it's probably even more than five million plus ethnic Germans in Hungary spread around. Some of them, I've seen maps dating to, you know, 1900 through to, to 1940 or something. In the region dealing with ethnic um, groups, and there's definitely significant pockets of Germans, but then I'm sure in major cities and other areas that they're just spread out and they're not in mappable pockets, but they're around, so... We'll get 20 manpower. Hungary loses 20 manpower. Relations change by 20, so I guess we improve things there. And yes, this is. These are the one headquarters that I very much want. Oh, well, that's a nice picture and all. And there's Hitler. There's Himmler or, or um, Hess in an SS uniform. But this is back in the days when. The SS was part of the brown shirts. So why use this photo to tell the story this late in the in the event chain? Because you have other ones. In this now the first one or whatever. So this you know is pre Hitler coming to power. This can tell from the photo. Or 1933 if it is him in power. No, we've been waiting too long here. Let's. Take this here. Let's look at our transport situation here. It's much safer now. Okay. Now at least we have some sub protection for our Brunswick or our Bismarck um, battle group. But also, I believe, okay, we've got their garrison. They, they have their planes to get off. So we'll leave them there. And we're going to head back up. Hmm, to where? To where? Um. Well, okay, most of them are there, so. They're nearly there, so let's go and let's go here. Okay, we won that. You're attacking there. You're going there. Okay, and you guys are battling for stuff. Yeah.
Oh, I know we just got helped up from Romania. You attack there. Right, looks like we cleared off all of that. Now just an occupation situation. Oh, attack pilot training. Um, advances. Let's just move this over to attack ground crew. Okay, another... um. Uh, death event from Third Reich event. Walter von Reichenau dies. Walter, Re or Walter von Reichenau, infamous for the Reichenau Order, which there's sort of a photocopy or whatever of it. Um, that was the um, kill the um, uh, Commissars Order. Suffered a super, uh uh, Serbial hemorrhage, hemorrhage, sorry, pronounced in Latin well, and it was decided to fly him to Poltova to, or from Poltova to a hospital in Leipzig. The plane made emergency landing in an airfield at, at that von Rasch, who died of a heart attack. Okay. Um, I figure that this could happen whether he's out in Poltova or wherever it might be. So you get the history. He dies of a of natural causes. To me, that almost looks like um, tote in the background, but I'm not sure. In in a Lithuanian uniform, that's him shaking. Right now. now he was um, a field marshal. You can tell by the um, extended general's tabs and the cross things there. Um, but he was also unlike a lot of the other the the not, uh, German army um, officers. He was very much of a uh, national socialist, a Nazi. Um, a lot of the other ones were more traditionalist Germans, but he bought in and he was big time. So we lose both him as a combat leader, which I'm hoping will work right because no, that's not him. Um, I think he's commanding something right now. Yep. Um, uh, oh yeah, here, six army. Okay. Um, why is he under Mediterranean command? Okay, well. Yep, no leader. And I also want to remove him from that command structure. And we are going to probably go over the limits of the three command groups. So we've lost Reich now. Japan, no, I don't think until we get here we can do that. Oh, is Japan doing that? We're pushing down here still, okay. Ah, okay, you're here finally, so, um, okay, that we want, okay, we want you to attack here. I'm just sort of deciding not to try to send my armor into the jungle. And you are going to support the attack, though I'm going to send you the other way, but for right now I want to be there to support. This attack, and we're going to lose you. Here, I know we're currently attacking there, but doing fairly well. Doing fairly well here, but. Okay, U boat pen in Lorient is constructed. Um, 
Kuroman submarine base was a German U-boat base located in Lorient during World War II. Gross Admiral Donut, uh, Karl Donitz decided to build the base on 28 June 1940 between February 41 and January 42. Three gigantic reinforced concrete structures were built on the Karoman Peninsula. They were called K1, K2, and K3. Man, they were creative with their titles. In 1944, work began on the force structure. The base was capable of sheltering 30 submarines undercover. Although Lorient was heavily damaged by Allied bombing raids, this naval base survived through the end of the war. Lorient was held until May 45 by the Nazi army, though, the sur though surrounded by the American army, the Germans refused to surrender. And I also bet um, the the Americans didn't press the attack terribly hard. You know, who wants to die for a, um, a naval base up here when you bypassed everything else and everybody's rushing to, to defeat, you know, defeat Hitler and the Nazis back in Germany. So, that's just my guess, but not that they wouldn't have tried, but if you're they're holding out, they're going to do that. Well, I think we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone for liking. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, you get to uh, see a lot more of these videos. That's, of course, if you've lasted this long. I presume you like um, watching me play and listening to me talk. And, of course, I want to hear from you. Please post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, corrections, whatever, down below. Just keep it civil. Uh, and also, sometimes it happens more than others, but I'm really pleased when I see um, various viewers interacting with each other. So um, even though I jump into a the conversation and ask, or answer somebody's question, you can get in there too. Whether with more information or maybe different or whatever, I don't know. Um, but I really like to, to hear that. And sometimes if it's on gameplay, I don't think I'm the best player. I of this game. I know there's other ways to play it, not just waiting for 42 for the invasion of, of um, so you, you, but just different ways of handling in, um, the units and different thoughts. Uh, I know that I've watched some that would like, you would keep the, these units say stationary here and then make pincer movements around this and cut them off. Yes, that's very good. It cuts them off. It destroys them. But I'm always of the tendency to want to also attack here, so they may be winning too many. That doesn't mean that I'm wrong and they're right, um, or I'm right and they're wrong. Just different styles of play. You know, do you push everywhere, or do you just try to do biggest surrounds? Um, you know, and there's good things about both, and so you just learn different play styles. So um, if you want to contribute down below your play style, or something in some debate or whatever, please do so. Thanks so much. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.